Today I have four iPhone gimbals and we're gonna see which one wins when we put them side by side. So I get requests from companies all the time to do reviews on my channel for gimbals. It seems to be like the hot thing right now is gimbals and smartphone gimbals specifically. There are so many different types of smartphone gimbals on the market. So I decided to test a few of them back to back to see what differences there are between different gimbals of this size and find one that works best because I'm sure a lot of you are interested in the differences because these gimbals aren't that much different. However, I found there is quite a range in how these gimbals function and what my experience was working with each one. Now, before we get into testing these gimbals against each other, I was not paid to do this video by any of these companies. However, these four gimbals were sent to me for me to product test, but I definitely am gonna give you an honest opinion on my thoughts on these different gimbals. So I've got the DJI Osmo Mobile 2, I've got the Moza Mini M, I've got the Zhiyun Smooth 4, and I've got the Freevision Vilta M. Now there's a few things to think about before we get into the minor differences between each of these gimbals. You know, what is the reason that you want an iPhone gimbal? There's a few features that come on gimbals that make it a lot easier to shoot than it is to shoot with just your iPhone in your hand. Now one thing that I discovered is that when you're shooting with these small gimbals, when you take the stabilizer off your phone, so these stabilizers in the phone are very good. And when you take the stabilizer off, you actually get really jittery footage. So when I was doing the test, when I was playing around with all four of these gimbals, I took the stabilizer off and I realized that across the board, these gimbals aren't super stable unless you have the stabilizer on in the phone. You do get like jittery footage, especially when you're doing things like running and especially because I'm shooting in daylight and I don't have an ND filter on my camera. That's one thing that I would suggest adding if you want to make your footage look much better when you're shooting with an iPhone is that get an ND filter because if you don't, you get that really jittery look. So that's the most important thing with a gimbal is that is your gimbal stable? Well, what I found out is that all of these do have a lot of shake in it when you turn that stabilizer off. So that's one interesting thing to note that stabilizers are great and they do a good job at keeping your footage stable, but you have to keep the stabilizer on. And the two work together in unison to give you some really awesome stable footage. And that's the purpose of a gimbal for an iPhone is that you get awesome stable footage. You can do some cool things like time lapses. You can do some really cool motion moves with your camera that you wouldn't be able to do if you're just using your iPhone because even if the stabilizer is good in your phone, you're still hand holding it. So when you have a stabilizer, it, it does give you better looking smooth footage when you use the gimbal properly and you're not jarring it around all over the place. If you shake it up and down, you're still gonna get poor footage. So let me give you a rundown of each of these gimbals so you have an idea of the key features that each of these gimbals have and what makes each of them unique. The DJI Osmo Mobile 2 has a 15 hour battery life. It's got some key features like time lapse, motion lapse, hyperlapse, slow mo, and it does have zoom control, which allows you to get smooth zooms while you're filming. This gimbal is lightweight and super portable with not a ton of buttons on it. You can use the DJI app or you can use Filmic Pro because it is integrated into the app. The Free Vision Vilta Mobile is another small portable gimbal. This one has a nice rubber grip that's easy to hold. It also has a 17 hour battery life. With this gimbal, you have a little bit more freedom with your time lapses and you can specify how long you wanna go between each shot. This gimbal uses a trigger on the backside to control all the modes. And when you hold the trigger, you can push up and down on the joystick to be able to zoom in and out, or you can push left and right and actually get a roll. So that makes it a little bit unique you can get those nice touch angles. The Smooth 4 was born for filmmakers, as it says on the website. This gimbal has a lot more buttons and the design of it is made so you don't have to use the app as much. You can just use the buttons on the gimbal itself and be able to do everything that you need to do. It has focus pull and zoom capability using the wheel on the side. This one, just like all the rest, have time-lapse, motion-lapse, and hyperlapse options. But beyond the focus and zoom control on the side, one of the unique things is the trigger on the back. So instead of using a joystick on the front, you actually use the trigger on the back and point the gimbal in a direction and that's how you control which way the gimbal is looking. 
Now the Moza Mini Me is actually the cheapest out of all four of these. And one of the really cool features about this is the wireless phone charging. So you don't have to have a cable plugged in to charge your phone while you're using the gimbal. All these gimbals allow you to charge while you're filming. However, if you have to plug in a cable, then it's gonna throw off the balance and you won't be able to use a bigger phone like a 7 Plus. So one of the key things that they talk about on the website for this one is that with the tracking, you're able to detect multiple people within the screen and be able to track them all precisely. This one also has the ability to zoom using the scroll on the front, and it's got multiple accessory points so you can add different things onto the gimbal, like microphones or lights or anything that you want to add. So let's talk about the worst and work our way up to the one that I personally would use. So the lowest on the totem pole for me was the Moza Mini M. And the reason I did not like this when I was using it is that the whole menu structure is super confusing when you're in the app. So when you're trying to get to any settings or trying to change how the gimbal works, it just took a lot of time and it was kind of confusing. When you look at the layout of the buttons, it's really not intuitive. So you have to like click through these buttons and use this wheel here for your zooming. And it just didn't really work that well. So when I was playing with this, this one gave me the biggest issues because it was just hard to use. Now out of all four, this is the cheapest one. So this is like $100. It's supposed to be the cheapest iPhone gimbal that you can get. It will keep your footage smooth, but one of the major things that went wrong is the tracking. So I think tracking is one of those things that is really useful in an iPhone gimbal because when you're using a gimbal this size and you're using the tracking, it's actually really powerful when it works well. So if you're doing like a live stream or if you're making videos and you're shooting yourself, the tracking makes it so that you don't have to focus so much on making sure the shot's right. You could just focus on holding the camera out and the camera will always stay on your face. When you're shooting the other direction and you want to keep a shot centered the whole time, it makes it really easy to use the tracking feature. I think gimbals with this size of phones, that's one of the cool features that you have is that tracking. This tracking didn't work at all. It was just all over the place and it did not work. There's supposed to be some special tracking software in this that you could track multiple people and do all these different things and it just could not hold the shot at all. Out of all four gimbals, I'm gonna say the Moza Mini M is the lowest on the totem pole. So number three out of the four, I would have to say, this was a shock to me, is the Zhiyun Smooth 4. And the reason that I'm giving this number three on the totem pole of gimbals is just the way it functions and the usability of it. So all the buttons are here. You got this cool jog wheel, which does the focusing and zooming. Even though it's super easy to use, one of the biggest issues first and foremost is that the tracking doesn't work. So I would try and track an object and it just kept losing the object. Now, the other reason I didn't really like this gimbal is the zoom and focus wheel. Because it's there, I want to use it and I want to have these smooth focus and zooms but it's not really user friendly. You start spinning it and it kind of moves, it kind of stops, like it, it doesn't work all the time. So I had issues playing around with that. I had issues with the tracking. And then just in general, using this gimbal is a different kind of motion than other gimbals that I've worked with. So you actually have to hold the trigger on the back of the gimbal to be able to set it into follow mode where it will follow you. You let go and it's gonna freeze the camera. Now you could physically move it using your hand and put it in different directions, but just the way that this works where you have this different kind of motion to move the gimbal around, it made it harder to use because if I'm switching between like my bigger gimbals and this gimbal, it's different functionalities. So you're actually having to relearn how to do these movement patterns to get the shots that you want. Now, this isn't that big of a deal if this is the only gimbal that you're working with and you're playing with this, you can really master it, but it actually stands out from a lot of other gimbals in general because it has this kind of different functionality. That mixed with the zoom and focus control not working very well, mixed with the tracking, makes it not the best gimbal. And then out of these four gimbals, it's actually the biggest. So it has the biggest footprint, which means that it's not as easy to carry around. Now the DJI and the Vilta, I could put in my pocket pretty easily as I'm walking around. The Moza has a weird setup where to keep it flat, you have to flip the gimbal motor upwards. So it actually stretches out as long as the Smooth 4. There's no way to collapse it where the motor sits flush against the base of the handle which I think is a crazy design flaw. Like if you're gonna make a gimbal, make it easy to pack up and make it small. So out of these four, the Smooth 4 is definitely number three. Now it's actually a toss up between the last two gimbals. You got the Vilta and you got the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. 
Now, both of these gimbals are similar in size and similar in functionality. And one thing that stood out is both of these gimbals had very good tracking in their software. So if you tracked an object, it would stay centered almost the entire time and you never have issues. Now, one thing with the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 is that you either only have lock mode or you have follow all mode, meaning that when you're holding the gimbal, it's completely locked. And the other mode, follow mode, is the camera follows in all directions. Well, the DJI only has those two modes, whereas the Vilta also has an additional mode where it keeps the tilt locked off, but the pan moves, which I think is actually useful in sometimes. Another thing with the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 is that you're limited in your range. So this motor specifically is not 360 degrees around, so you can't move all the way around. It actually hits at a certain point. So if you're tracking something or if you're moving around a lot, you could hit that range. Whereas on the Vilta, you have a 360 degree motor here. Now, in terms of keeping your footage stable, both of them do a really good job. I did see a little bit more of an improvement with the DJI over the Vilta, but it's pretty small and it's not the biggest deal in the world. Now, one really cool feature about using the DJI is that they have integrated into the Filmic Pro app. So I know a lot of people use the Filmic Pro app, it's the app I use, to be able to have more creative control over your image on an iPhone. And the DJI Osmo is actually built into that app so that you can use the functions of your DJI Osmo Mobile 2 within the app Filmic Pro so they work together. Both of these side by side are good choices if you're looking for an iPhone gimbal. I highly suggest either getting the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 or getting the Vilta M. I like keeping this one on me. It's a great gimbal to use all the time. The grip is amazing on it. The DJI is just plastic, whereas this one has a rubberized grip. It's just built a little bit stronger, more beefier. It just feels like this gimbal is gonna last, whereas this one's a little bit more plasticky. So like I said, it's a toss up. Both these gimbals are very good, but out of these selections, I would choose one of the two. The DJI, if you want more creative control and you wanna use the Filmic Pro app, and it's integrated with the gimbal. Now you could definitely use Filmic Pro with the Freevision Vilta M because you can access all the modes just from the trigger and the joystick on the front. So you actually can use it, it's just not integrated the same way that the DJI has. All right guys, I hope this gives you an idea of the range of gimbals that are out there for smartphones. There's definitely a lot of options and a lot of them are around the same price point. But I highly suggest not looking at the marketing that goes into some of these gimbals and actually look at the functionality of them because there are some cool features that are stated on different companies' websites, but when you actually use the gimbal, it doesn't have the same functionality and it just doesn't work the same. So I'd love to know your thoughts on my choice between the Vilta and the DJI, and I'd love to know if you guys have had a different experience with the Moza or the Smooth 4. I hope this video helped in making your decision on which gimbal to get. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss any of the videos I got on this channel. There's lots of filmmaking tutorials, I've got different reviews, also some pretty awesome travel vlogs from when me and my wife travel around the world. Also come find me on Instagram at Jevendovi and guys, I will see you on the next one.